Claus. Rudolph the red nosed reindeer had a very shiny nose. And if you ever saw it, you would even say it glows. What is going on, everybody? It's the Big Dog Podcast, and I am one of the dogs in the studio today. Josh Wilson, your host, and I've got Katie Yergen in the studio for the first time since the spring. A. A. <laughs> and this is uh, the Big Dog Podcast Mimosa edition. So In solo cups. In solo cups, because Katie, if anything, we always keep it very real. Correct? I like to say we're classy bitches. <laughs> As you pop the bottle. <laughs> it's a great way to start the podcast. Classy bitches. <laughs> Is what we are. So anyway, Katie um, was episode two. All right. Katie was on and we had a conversation about um, all in was the title of that episode. How are you? Are you good on your? Oh, I'm good. Your starter beverage. All right. And this is also orange off leash orange. Yeah. If you guys are going to take a sip of the mimosa, make sure you do it away from the mic. Oh, good. I mean, well, Thank you. Well, yeah. Jonathan, Jonathan's people awesome. may want to hear my uh, sipping. We don't need ASMR on the podcast. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you, there it is. <laughs> All right. So we got Katie. I got, now I got orange stuff in my mustache. Did you go no pulp? No, I went home style. Never heard of it before, but it sounded kind of good as some pulp. Yeah, it's in the mustache. It's going to show up. These cameras are great. And so it's going to show everything. Oh, cool. So anyway, Katie was here on episode two and that was back in what? Did we record in May? I have no idea. I mean, it was, no, it was like April we started recording because we were celebrating Bay River's first birthday. Oh, yeah, yeah. So we were sense. hyping that up. We were recording. So that was in the spring. A little bit has changed since then, huh? Just a little bit. Yeah? Like what? You've been married a couple times? Only two. <laughs> Actually, no. Yes. Well, yeah. well, no. I got married before April, the first oh, time. Oh, that's right. It was in March. Yeah. And then you got married again, and so you had an annulment. And then you got re you got married last weekend. That's one way to look at it. Right? Yeah. Got remarried. Mm -hmm. How's he doing? This guy doing better than the first one? To be determined. Oh, geez. So to clarify for everybody listening, Katie did not get married twice this year, but she did get married twice this I mean, year. I did. But to the same guy. <laughs> COVID, COVID kind of messed up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, she's a COVID bride. It's kind of like a COVID puppy thing. They don't really know how to act. They weren't real socialized. And so you got to kind of work. Honestly, that's different. how I felt <laughs> the entire second wedding weekend. Ooh. Yeah. So it was awesome, though. You had a beautiful wedding down in Manio, North Carolina. Yep. Right on the water. Yep. During a Nor'easter. Gale Force wins. A hundred percent. A KD weekend. It literally <laughs> Coming in hot. <laughs> it was it was the best time though, Jonathan. Like we had the best time. Like I'm not a big dancer. I danced my ass off. We had a great time. The dance floor was full. I believe it. I love Manio, North Carolina. <laughs> the face I just got. <laughs> have you ever been to Manio? Do you Go though? Ahead. Oh no, I do. I have family down there. That's where my great aunt's down there. In Manio? Yeah, I told Katie about an enchilada place you should go to. Oh yeah, Ortegas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we didn't make it there. They were closed. It was never. Oh, okay. Yeah. I would say it was never. Manual off to me. season. They like to shut a lot of things down at the weird times. Banks in general. Well, yeah. So Friday night, we are in the great city of Manio, North Carolina, in the Outer Banks, and we had the rehearsal dinner, mm -hmm. and then a lot of Katie's family's in town, and um, by default, I got a little invite, you know, to go out and hang out, and so we end up going to a place. But they're full. They're at capacity. I'm like, all eight people in the Outer Banks are at this one bar tonight. Like, what? It's the only bar that stays open past nine. So, yeah. Gotcha. Like, so, anyway, sense. this place was packed. They couldn't get anybody in. So, we go down the road to another place. Ends up being a tiki bar. A, a tiki bar on the roof of this building with a nor'easter. Okay. Wind is, is humming. It's, it's ridiculous. When I called ahead, they said that there was lots of heaters up there. And it was nice, warm, and cozy. And I think... That was accurate. Yes, it was. And we filled the tiki bar with her family. There a lot was one of them couple came there. from Pittsburgh. And then all my Pittsburgh family and everybody else yeah, filled up. It was a good time. That one couple that was there left very quickly. Well, they asked if it was a private party. Well, that was the couple that was there left. And then another couple walked in oh. and asked if it was a pri private party. And we told them it wasn't, but they weren't down for it anyways. So. Yeah. We said it was, it was a party. It's not private. Come on in. They didn't 
they didn't they like went on that. down the road. So anyway, we had a great time at this tiki bar, um, but it closed at nine. Yep, nine thirty. They extended it a little bit for us. I think. Oh, that was kind of them. So we roll out. Everyone's hungry. I mean, they had good food at the rehearsal dinner. It was good food, but people are hungry. So like, no big deal. Order a pizza. For three hours, I think people attempted one way or another to try to find just to get a freaking pizza. pizza. DoorDash. One of my buddies, Matt, he called 7 Eleven. They had frozen pizzas in the freezer. At this point, though, uh, Matt wasn't in a position where it's in anyone's best interest for him to drive. He's a responsible guy, so he's hanging out at the house. He's not driving anywhere. I think he offered the guy $200 to leave the 7-Eleven and bring him a DiGiorno. <laughs> he didn't take him up for the offer? We didn't get into DiGiorno, so I'm yeah. assuming no. 7-Eleven has good benefits. <sighs> he's trying to keep that job. I guess so. And I'm like, you could probably run out to Manio from whatever 7-Eleven he's at, get back to 7-Eleven. No one's probably coming in. That was actually a pretty smart thing about calling a 7-Eleven because that was literally the only thing that could have been open at that time. Like grocery stores, everything closed. Yeah, Matt's no dummy. He's not. He's got it. But hey, I'll tell you what, Saturday night after the wedding, we were not in that situation again, lacking mm-hmm. snacks. Nope. Freezer full of any frozen food you could possibly think of. <laughs> Someone bought White Castle frozen hamburgers. <laughs> <laughs> I've never in my life had one. Yeah, I could taste the salmonella from here. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, congrats, K- Katie. Cheers. Oh, thanks. Congrats to you. We'll reach across the solo gun. Okay. So Katie got married again. We're finally done with that season of life, and now she's a married woman. It's great. Thank God. Congrats. Josh so, is really tired of talking about it. Oh, no. I'm y'all's biggest fan. <laughs> Can we just get this done? Rah, rah, rah. Literally. <laughs> Let's get back to work. So here we are. So we got Katie in the studio today um, only because, so when she did her episode back in April, we were celebrating Bay River's first birthday. And um, since that time, we have closed Bay Rivers for in daycare. That was a strategic decision that we made. Um, and there are a lot of things that went into it. Um, and I recorded an episode actually back in August that I decided to kind of just keep for myself and not post publicly. Um, but I do want to talk about that time and that season and that transition uh, because I think it's important. I think there's a, a lot of lessons to be learned there. Um, and the way I'm looking back at that time frame of late summer, three and a half months removed, is a little bit differently than I was looking into it in the heat of it. And I think a lot of times people will make decisions in the heat of a moment. And, and I've been known to do that, um, Katie, once or twice, right? Sure. <laughs> sure. Um, you know, and sometimes you look back after you've chilled out, you've gotten some separation from an event, a circumstance, whatever. Um, and you're like, damn, I wish I wouldn't have done that. And I'm here three and a half months later with a lot more clarity. And I'm still very confident in the decision we made. I'm very happy in the decision that we made. I think it was a hundred percent the right decision. Um, but there's some lessons. I think that we've learned for sure out of it and some messages uh, that I think need to be shared. And I want to talk about those things today with you, Katie. Uh, One of the things I talked about in the episode that I I will not probably publish um, is finishing well and, you know, in transitions of staff from jobs, particularly when they're like entry level jobs and, you know, you're, you're going to move on. No one has this naive agenda that you're going to work, there in a certain place forever, but how important it is to finish well, because, you know, a lot of people go along and they'll string together three, four, five jobs where they don't finish well, they leave and they don't kind of just blow up a relationship. They burn down the whole town. literally, <laughs> Right. And I feel like a lot of, I don't know, it makes me sound old, but Younger people, early 20s, maybe mid-20s, it gets better with some grown-ass people. But for the most part, 
that early 20s range right now. You say that that you feel old. I'm 29 and I agree with I know exactly what you're about to say and I agree 100%. <laughs> you know, there if there is this situation of for right or for wrong, if they feel any type of wronged, it, it they feel as if the world cares about their opinion. Nobody gives a shit. Nobody cares. But everybody feels like they just got to go on and run their mouth about stuff and try to, like, destroy. Well, what they forget their opinion is, is their opinion. Uh Uh-huh. And everybody has their opinion. And they have a right to their opinion. And they have a right to that opinion. So they can have it. Yes. As you can have it as well. But you also are the owner of the company. So your opinion to your company, your your opinion to your company matters. Their opinion to your company doesn't necessarily matter. Yeah. It's just, it's like the same thing. Like you could have as a mother, an opinion to your family that matters a hell of a lot more than somebody else's opinion on your family to a certain extent. Sure. I think the thing with opinions that bother me, (laughs) like, I feel like when I have an opinion on something, I have my opinion, but I'm also able to consider all the details like what's the full story because anybody can make Very anything realistic. seem like anything right you can capture a moment a, a photo and create a narrative behind it that is literally a split second in time of anything i can stand in certain angles and i don't look like i weigh 280 pounds look like an athlete but you turn that camera Probably how this one is right now. Yeah, literally. <laughs> and, and I look like I haven't been in the gym in a little bit, you know? It, but uh, perception, great. you can take a moment and take your words and create a narrative behind it and create a perception of something that is so false. And then what happens? People run with it. Mm-hmm. People run with it. And they forget about their own personal interactions with something their own experiences with, with an individual. Oh, well, I heard F that guy. I hope he dies. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Your kid's godfather. <laughs> That's weird. 40 years of knowing the guy and loving the guy and him invested in your family and you invested in him and you brought him into that closest circle of your family. But somebody said he runs red lights. I hope he dies. I mean, I think that that's the big issue, right? Because social media and where a lot of these opinions are spread, that's people's like basis in reality. So they view it as when an opinion is presented as like a universal truth, which is nowhere near the case. Yeah. Well, it's funny too, because shout out to my mom. Hi, Donna. Hi, Donna. (laughs) But even like, she's kind of like an outsider, doesn't really get on social media too much, doesn't really get like too involved. I mean, I'm a very, very busy person. So she just kind of heard. Because I told her, hey, we're shutting down Bay Rivers. And she was so distraught. Like, she was so sad for me. And I was like, no, this is a great thing. Like, yep. it was sad at first, but, like, this is a really good move. Yeah. But even, like, even her, like, there's so many different opinions that can go into why a, a business decision is made. Good, bad, care. Like, I care about you and I'm worried for you. Like, things like that. And I'm, like, so pissed at you. Like, whatever it could be, there's so many different opinions. Yeah. Like, we're not just talking about one specific thing like just so many different types of opinions that go into it of i'm really worried for you and you're like why like this is hear me out this is great and it has been great for sure and i think that you know for us because you know here it is you know april we record your episode we're celebrating we're telling the story of bay rivers um we had a massive one-year birthday party we were high as a kite about bay rivers Mm -hmm. we were so so and had no idea excited about it what was to come and our excitement and our enthusiasm at the one year mark and the success that we were having probably put blinders on to a lot of things mm-hmm. that we we would if it wasn't doing as well as it was we probably would have paid a little more attention to and i think that i i stand by this and i'll stand by this forever the dogs that came to bay rivers had an amazing time The dogs that came to Bay Rivers were incredibly well cared for. Um, They were loved. They were invested in. The experience that they had was unlike any other uh, in the area. I'll stand by that forever. Because of that and because the 
crazy amount of feedback that we got from clients and how much they love it. And there was never a day where someone didn't come in or message us or post on social media about how much they love the business and the experience their dog has. It had me ignoring the feasibility of the business. So I'm like, Hey, this is a great add on. This is a, a tremendous experience. Staffing the entire time was very, very difficult. Turnover like no other. Do and, any other business right now in COVID and right, you know, anything. so many every nothing industry. abnormal, but much like a daycare, you need to have enough adults to kid ratio. Sure. You have enough adults to dog ratio <laughs> right. and stuff. Right, and so you know what? For me, the the accolades kind of put the blinder on to keep me from looking at like, okay, what is this really taking to pull off? You know, how much of your time is it taking? Because you're responsible for a lot. You oversee our training locations. You oversaw, you know, Bay Rivers when that was running. You deal with our administrative team. And you have a ton of responsibility. And it's like, but how much of, just as an example, your time is being eaten up by Bay Rivers. And that probably equated to 40 to 50% realistically all the time. Or what ended up being maybe 4% of our organization's profit. That makes no sense. Pretty wild. It, it, when, you think, when you like say it like that, it's sure it's crazy. And yes, it was a huge stress and a huge time consuming piece of the whole, the whole thing, the whole business. Absolutely. And it does that, that shouldn't take away from how great it was. And nothing great is without trouble. Nothing great is without issues and problems and nothing worth doing should be easy. Um, and we're a new business. So there was lots of stuff we were learning along the way. People that were trusted that ended up not being able to be trusted. And we had to move on from a lot of relationships. A lot of people get into that business because they feel like, hey, I love dogs. I want to play with dogs all day at the daycare. That is not the... And no matter how in depth you could like depict what the reality was in an interview, hey, you have to be able to lift up to 50 pounds or you have to be able to jump right in because a dog decides to get sassy with another dog because right. they're dogs. Yep. Like all of these things, like you're cleaning poop after poop after poop. Like one dog decides it wants to take a dump. Guess what? Like it's like a trickle effect. Every dog is like right. smells it. My turn. Like yeah. it's it's so, it's so much. And you like you literally make it sound but the interviews were the craziest thing. You make it sound like it's such an awful thing. So that way the people who you thought you would bring on be like, right. oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. I They they said all that in the interview. No, it's fine. I love dogs. And the amount of people, I mean, we had like three or four people walk out on their first shift because it's like they literally thought I was coming to cuddle with puppies. Yeah. Uh, there were more than that. Well, I'm I saying, remember one uh, day first, we had like first two. First shift. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. First shift. Yeah. There were some that walked out like early on, but like first, first shift, they're like, holy, this is not for me. It's a difficult job. It's so hard. And what we required is a lot. Yes. And maybe people can't, we had some people come from other daycares and we operated differently. Very different. And our standards were very high comparatively. Yeah. I remember that um, a narrative that was being thrown around late summer was that, you know, we don't care about the rooms. Um, we don't care about like dogs fighting and, and all these things. And, you know, dogs are, I don't care how well staffed a room is. I don't care how well balanced a, a, a room is the evaluations are dogs are dogs and just like kids on a playground every once in a while there's a, a scuffle some kids will get into it and the, the dogs are the same way um you know any dog daycare or boarding facility that allows play groups and things of that nature that says they never have altercations or scuffles it's full of shit. Mm -hmm. Like we are not running dog fighting rings. This is just some shit that happens from time to time. And it's funny yeah. to me too, because everything that we could possibly eliminate and, it, and, and as much as someone could say one thing, there was equally the, another person to every comment that would say the exact, like the exact opposite. So for instance, we didn't even let things like treats, dog toys, tennis balls, anything that could kind of ignite a fight. Yeah. We would never allow that in the room because it's like, we were also that facility that accepted dogs 
it's, that got turned away from so many other facilities. So right. it's like we people just don't understand that like lots of dog places operate differently and it's okay. Yep. Some some poor, some good, a lot good and a lot good but are different. Yep. And we were just we were good and different. There's 100%. nothing wrong with that. And that's what we've heard overwhelmingly since we've closed also. Um oh yes. Again, this is the mimosa edition. Refill. So if you're watching on YouTube, <laughs> um we're just staying hydrated. Don't worry about yeah, it. Yeah, it's fine. You need a little more juice, you good. Yeah, right. Okay. Katie's on the just the champagne edition, not the mimosa. So I think I think that goes back to your uh point of perception though. Cause people who kind of come from other places might have that perception of like, wow, we do things differently, but somebody who just kind of shows up and applies yeah. for a job and then leaves however they so choose might look at it differently. Well, I remember people coming on to work and like, oh my gosh, this facility is incredible. Yeah, we'd have 20 dogs in a 10 by 10 space and they would just play and that was rain or shine. You know, that's just kind of how it worked. Outdoor um, dirt, you know, but grass, mo- yeah, yard. outside was dirt or whatever. And we have freaking 2,000 square foot turf spaces, you know, where it doesn't matter if it's raining or whatever. Dogs aren't getting dirty. They're not whatever. Then we had large indoor spaces and sure, you know, some days, some weekends capacity was huge, crazy. So did we start because we need to start breaking up the room? Did we start splitting larger spaces into smaller spaces and then rotating outside and doing all this? Yeah. We were adjusting as we were, and we were kind of we're growing, learning as we were going like to see what works. So you don't 100%. actually know until you kind of try it and you're like, no, this actually doesn't work. Or wow. I would have never thought that that was the fix we needed. And that was great. 100%. Or, oh, these three dogs that are here today kind of blow up the whole plan. Yeah, literally. Not bad dogs, just the dynamic that's created because every dog is different. And every, dog's, every dog has a mood like a person does. Sure. They could have a really pissy day and then the next day they're happy as can be. Yeah, and that dog's probably Cute not going to be Stella. running around <laughs> chilling with everybody during the day right. if they got an attitude going on. Did you? What, I said Q Stella. Oh, I thought you said cute Stella, oh, and I no. got confused. That's, that's what I thought you said. No, yeah, cute like, Stella. No, yes. Let's be real. I I know my dog. <laughs> like, yes. She could be happy, but she could be... No, she would be a little bit terrible. Uh-huh. Rocky. She was the one that we, the one day, it wasn't supposed to happen, but, you know, staff make mistakes sometimes and kind of forgot our no tennis ball rule very, uh-huh. very early on. And that, I think, was our first scuffle was because they kind of forgot and... Tennis balls got out and Stella loves her tennis balls. She's like, I'm going to get this thing. Exactly. So, but that's the thing. And like, just as much as we were kind of seeing what works and what doesn't work to set the dogs up for success every day, our staff sometimes failed us too. (laughs) And that happens. Yeah. And that was also an exciting thing. Like late summer when stuff was going on, like staff fails every business. Like you got to eat. You, You didn't get the side that you ordered. Or they didn't put your order in, but they brought out the food for everybody else at your table. Right. Like right. I'm not going to cancel wands because somebody forgot my burrito. You know what I mean? Like it's not a thing. Wands food's delicious. I'm going to come back and get it next time. And I'll probably get my burrito. Everybody had a good time. Somebody just forgot the burrito. And here's the reality. They're also super short staffed. Right. Like everybody else. Like they're counting on staff who have been trained and this is every industry. I just love wands. They're a scout guide family. So, you know, shout out to wands. If you have not been to wands, you got to get the frozen, what is it? The soft serve margarita. Yes. It's so good. It's literally like ice cream. But the soft serve margarita at wands. If you're in Hampton roads, you need to get this. My only recommendation is ask for a side of tequila on the side and then dump it on top. Yeah. I'm nicknaming this podcast Alcoholics Anonymous. Look at you two. Drinking (laughs) on the podcast. You know, talking about drinking. What do you mean? No. What day is it today? Thursday, 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 Thursday. You don't open up your Thursdays with a uh, mimosa. We don't typically, we don't (laughs) typically do this. No, because I have podcasts to record Katie. Thank you, Jonathan. You're like, I actually take my work seriously. Job to do. Josh and Katie just roll in here with so look. <laughs> that's good. We're getting it done. So, but no, I mean, I think that that's a part where everybody is so quick to cancel and end something. Judge. Right. Where you have no, what is your point of reference? Like, what is the basis for your comments, your decisions, um, your messages? Like, what are you getting behind? And it's shocking to me 
the amount of people, grown ass people, that don't take that into consideration. I don't like this, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, yeah. Burn them down. Yeah. I don't like it. So nobody else should either. And nobody else should either. Known. And it's like, oh, you know what? You're right. You don't like that. Yeah. They're, they're pieces of shit. Yeah. I hope he dies in a car crash. I hope his family burns. I hope blah, 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 blah. What is the, what is the basis for these things? Like, I mean, there's been some messed up stuff. Happened to a lot of businesses that are terrible. And I always look back, I'm like, is this the business's issue? Or was this an individual that might have been a bad hire? Still the business's issue. But like, what are we really like talking about? And that that part plays over to that ending well piece. Like, how many times, like with one of the big reasons Bay Rivers no longer exist, because I got tired of the spinning wheel staff. And I got tired of that, that revolving door, if you will, of people not ending well. I got tired cool. of coaching people and saying, Hey, this is why we do things. This is why it's important. You, this is how you were taught. You're not doing these things. And so we need these things to happen or over the next 30 days, if we don't see improvement, it's not going to work. I And I think that's the biggest thing, honestly, it's naturally you're hiring an entry level position. We hired people and we train them in house. So it's entry sure. level. Yeah. And yeah, if you like you, we work with dogs and that's what people want to confuse. Like we, we like what I really appreciate about you is you give people opportunity. You create a business to give opportunity of jobs and growth and learning and things like that. And that's great, but you're right. It was a constant battle of, Hey, this is what we require. Yeah. And then requirements were often not met because what, because staff fail you sometimes sure. and the type it's an entry level position and across the street we have mcdonald's hiring at 15 dollars an hour with a thousand dollar sign on bonus and oh, yeah. all these different things and you know it's great for them they're mcdonald's <laughs> like we're still technically a small business and just trying to offer yeah. great opportunities for dogs to come get energy out think what you want about me we ain't McDonald's. And I think it's also important to note that that revolving door is also like a result of not just the people, but also your standard that you set for those 100%. people. Like that's such that, a good point. That's yeah. why they're moving out so quickly right. because obviously we care about the dogs. If people are getting fired, you know why they were fired? Because they didn't take care of the dogs up to our standard. Well, and that's the thing, Jonathan, that's a really good point because that carries across our training business and the boarding and daycare and in theory should apply to all businesses out there. You meet the standard and you don't. Now, if you don't meet the standard because the company has not made that standard very clear, that's not your fault. Right. That's not your fault. That's the company's fault. But if the company has made the standard exceptionally clear and short of health and well-being and treatment of animals being at risk, I've never fired a soul. Never. On the initial. Now, if it's health and well being and the treatment of an animal, I, the second I find out, you're gone. You're gone. Very quickly. And, because and that the is only our priority. Other thing, that is our top priority. The only other thing that I would say we would let go is team culture, because that's number oh, two sure. priority that yeah. you protect. Yeah. And that those are the two things we make so very clear in the beginning yeah. health and safety of a dog, first and foremost. And then, get the job done in team culture. You know, we want a positive and fun atmosphere. We don't negativity and just different things like that. Like be kind to people. You know, we, we, I felt like some days we had 30 staff in and out of those doors at that facility. hundred percent. And that's a ton of people. That's a ton of people to employ and manage and, and team culture is such an important thing. Yeah. And if everybody's on the same page, it makes that part easier. But you can have one person who can just blow up the whole damn thing. And that's any business. This isn't us bitching about, oh, woe is me. It's not that at all. It's just, guys, we're, we're talking about this stuff because if you're out there and you're a small business owner or you started up a sister business that you think, you know, supports well your, your, your main thing, you need to be thinking about what is the actual value that this add-on is bringing? Because I put a lot more value on it based on the... um uh, 
response we were getting from the market. The feedback from clients. Feedback from clients. Amazing. Yeah. It it made me feel like it made me feel great because I was so proud that an original concept, boarding and daycare is not our original concept. How we did it is very different. And it was having tremendous success. But when I actually looked at the numbers, math is unemotional. It was emotional when we made the decision. But math is unemotional. And I sat down and looked at the numbers and I looked at the time it required of the staff, um, supporting it, you, whatever. It, it, it just didn't make sense. When we could put that time into other areas, other support of our organization and, and just do better. Um, you know, but one thing, you know, we were talking about was when we let people go for those non-negotiable items. There is no warning that an instance happens. That is not a coachable moment for me. That is a character. That is a moral failure on your part as an individual. You can't be here anymore. 99% of the time, it's a coachable, trainable issue. And so we're going to coach on it. We're going to train on it. If there's an issue again, we're going to coach and we're going to train. There's probably going to be a probationary period assigned to it because we're having the same issue multiple times. People are unwilling, overwhelmingly, to take self-accountability and be like, yeah, you know, this is the second time that Katie or Josh or whoever has sat me down and talked about this issue. It's a simple thing. I, I keep screwing it up. What am I doing? Why am I still repeating that issue? Where am I missing the where am I missing this? What do I need to do? They're coaching me. They're trying to help me. It's very clear what the expectation is. This is not rocket science. Nothing we do is rocket science. Why can't I get this right? That internal conversation is never had. 90 plus percent of the time, the second somebody's put on a probationary period for multiple issues, they quit mid shift. Mm-hmm. Walk out. They'll walk out that afternoon after the and conversation. I want to say, and, and I do, I do believe it is a massive chunk of that generation, earlier twenties kind of generation, but even, even older than that, like even my age, I mean, it's just. Which is significant. <laughs> your age. What? Your age is significant. Oh, yeah. It yeah. Is, yeah. It is an actual adult number now. It, I, I feel very adult. 29. It's a big deal. Um, <laughs> But yeah, it just, it's crazy to me. It's so accurate because a lot of those decisions you actually weren't even involved in. Correct. I took the brunt of those. Um, and, and I'd like to say I'm kind I'm the queen of grace. Like I literally, you get mad at me all the time, but like, I always look for like a silver lining. I'm always like, well, I mean, yeah, they made that mistake, but I understand why they, you know, their thought process led them to make that decision that happened to be a mistake. Yeah. And so I feel like in that I showed a lot of grace to a lot of people and gave those coaching moments, gave opportunity, but I also am a very blunt person. I'm going to tell you what you did wrong and why you did wrong. And let's figure out a way to not do that again. And so those people that we would hire and try to coach and things like that, sometimes you're right, would just actually just be uncoachable. They don't. And, and that is another thing I really love about us and the company that we have is Yes, we prioritize the dogs first. And I know all of the dog owners that have come to us for training or daycare, anything love us for that because they know and believe that that is our first priority always. But secondary to that is that team culture and the amount of people that just would not acknowledge or take accountability for their wrongdoings or their mistakes and learn and grow. How ask me how many times that I had a conversation of what could I do better than? Like, how could I? I see what you're saying. What could I do better? Non-existent. Yep. Yeah. None. So I wonder why that is. And Jonathan, you know, maybe we'll bring you in a little bit here. Why do you feel, um, because you're closest to this, this age range where we see this overwhelmingly. I don't claim them though. I know you don't. I know you don't. <laughs> but, and I'm not trying to associate. This is just an age thing. I don't know if they're teaching this at UVA or, in or what, cl- you know. Yeah, and, and for <laughs> real, though, like, there are so many people that might be around that age and are spectacular, but. I, so many, I think it's a stretch. Okay, maybe. I mean, I'm going to be honest. I'm not trying to bullshit anybody. Yeah. But how many people, honestly, did we have to go through to find 
one really solid human being. Yes. So I I'm actually, not talking about employee. I'm talking about human being. Yes. Like 30, you're a good person. 40. Yeah. At one point I had to find one 37 names on my board of the, where I was tracking this of over the span of maybe two and a half months. I had 37 names on my board of who I interviewed, most of which accepted the job, uh, started training. And then at what point they left? And I think, or were let go. I think I ended up with nine yeah. at the end of that two and a half months That's of 37. Crazy. And, and any, and I agree, like you brought up other small businesses out there earlier. Like this is not a dog thing. This is not a small business thing, even that it's literally that the climate right now. And it's crazy. Yeah. And if you were to look at the ages of those people, they are kind of J max age and my age frame and things like that. So Jonathan, why? The y'all in that age range, <laughs> y'all feel the need overwhelmingly, in my opinion, to be uncoachable, to be indifferent, and to go freaking nuclear when you're held accountable. I think that it's... Uh, or attempt to be nuclear when, yeah. you're un- when you're held accountable. I think that it's a matter of what people value. You know, and not everybody values that learning and coaching process that comes with the job. They don't value being coachable or acquiring skills that could lead to a future position. They really just care about the money. And to cut a little slack to people my age, I think it's just because the cost of living for them, like everybody, has gone up. And they find it to be that jobs don't care about them. So they think, oh, well, if this job don't care about me. I could just not care about the job, but that's where I think we're a little bit different because we genuinely do care about. But why people. do, but so why do you feel like, because I look at like right now, the last 12 months, I look at wages higher than I've ever seen. I look at benefits better than I've ever seen. I look at uh, flex time and opportunities, bonuses, all of these things better than I've ever seen just to get people to show up to work to 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 cook food that they're going to look at a chart and do what Dairy Queen your husband said he saw a sign at Dairy Queen $15 an hour and free and iPhone free 13 iPhone 12 12 whatever yeah. free iPhone 12 that's your sign on bonus iPhone 12 I'm sitting here looking at my phone it's 11 I was like I might go get freaking <laughs> Jonathan got the iPhone says, yeah. Jonathan has the iPhone. Yeah. <laughs> like, I have an I think iPhone. That's an iPhone color. <laughs> yeah. Is that what they call that? That's a 2003 <laughs> edition. No. <it's laughs> All right. My iPhone is in what, what the fourth grade now? <laughs> oh my gosh. I know we're getting jobs for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I agree with you. Right. And I, I will say, I mean, government money is great sometimes. <laughs> And I, I genuinely think that's what it is. Oh, I hate that. I, ge- I, ge- I hate that. I genuinely think that's what it is. But um, if you don't like, if you don't have to go get it, then why would you ever try and go get it? You know? Okay. So there's a better question. Why is that? Like, why would people, why not? Like I would never, there's no part of me. And I know I'm abnormal. Okay, I understand. In so many ways, I am abnormal. Yes. Good, some good, mostly probably bad. I am an abnormal person. I think that's why I get to live an abnormal life. There's no fiber of me that could ever consider, hey, Josh, these are your options. Sit at home, do nothing. Here's some money. Or all the opportunity in the world. You choose. I think it's also you, you found what your passion is. I feel like that's a big thing out there is that so many people my age don't necessarily have like that drive to be passionate about working. So they just look at a job as literally a job. It is a damn job at that point though. Like it is a job. I freaking did popcorn at Riverdale movie theater. My first day on the job, I'm in there and I set the damn movie reel on fire. It looked like bonanza on the screen in the movie theater. I'm thought I'm getting Fired, but homeboy had a thing of vodka sitting in the ice machine, so he wasn't gonna say shit to nobody. He was gonna keep his mouth shut because he was alcoholic. But like it, I mean, I worked really crappy jobs when I needed to, and it taught me a lot of things about what I don't want to do, what I don't want to be. But I would still go work, and I didn't have to work. Well, I think that's a big miss. The biggest 
misconception right now is you're right. Like people will just think it's so many things. I didn't realize our podcast was turning into this, but this is where we're at. it's so many things of the pressure of a high schooler going to college and knowing what they should major in and knowing what they should do with their life and having this plan set and all of these things. So it's like, I, I can get on board with what you're saying, Jonathan. It's like, what are you passionate about? And if you're not passionate about that job, then yeah, like you found what you're passionate about, Josh, but you also found that when you were that age and then you also blew it up or, you know, the economy kind of blew up for right. you, but, and then you did a, some other things and here you are again being a small business owner. So, I mean, I get both sides of that, but also it's like, I also get, it doesn't matter if you're passionate about it. What did you sign up for? Did you agree in your interview to do this work and right. do it well? Yes. Yes, you did. Are you getting a paycheck for what you're doing and you're doing it well? Yes, you are. Then do the job. And do it well. And do it well. Right. Like, it's not hard to pick up dog poop. Is it gross sometimes? Yes. What is it, hard? We're so glamorous. No, I know, right? We work with dogs. But it just says a perfect, it's not hard to flip burgers. Is it boring sometimes? Sure. I mean, I don't know. I never did it, but like have to yeah, imagine. Sure. And I mean, that. I feel like that does go back to like my peers, at least the people that I know, like going to UVA. Yeah. If you grew up your whole life, didn't have a job, and then your only commitment that you needed to make was going to a school, you're not really going to be committed to that first job or first few jobs you have. And sure. it's, it's really um, just, I think, a lack of a lack of commitment and a lack of people working those difficult jobs at an early age. Like yeah. I did summer camp at the YMCA for seven twenty five an hour, eight hour days. Literally. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and those are hard. You had so many kids and it was hot outside. You're sweating. But here's the thing, though, that's uh, it's funny about that is I get that. I get that. I, again, not naive. Don't expect people to have an entry level job and stay at it forever and, and make a 100%. career out of it. I don't actually know. My issue is why are people unable to end well? To finish because here's on. my thing I'm doing this do job at the daycare, I'm flipping these burgers, I'm a manual laborer at this construction company with this shovel, and I'm taking rocks off this curb line every day as the homeboy runs the, the tractor along the way and kicks the rocks up. I don't know that anyone is in any of those positions because they're passionate about it. 100%. They're working to make ends meet, to make something happen. They're learning some skills. Something's going on. And here's the thing. You realize you're not passionate about it, or you realize I'm doing a really shitty job, which is why I'm constantly being corrected. I'm constantly being coached. I'm constantly being pressed to improve. I probably need to move on down the road. No big deal. Guess what? Cool. No one is shocked by that. Hey, you know what, Mr. Wilson, Josh, Katie, whatever. This just isn't working out for me. I'm probably going to be out of here in two weeks. I'm going to start looking for something else. A hundred percent of the time, I'm not firing you. Do your job. Do it well, end well, and guess what? 100% of the time, you're going to thank you. Guess who you get a reference from? That's what I was saying. Thank you for giving me the notice. I would love to be the first person you put on your your references. But the reality is, the reality is, overwhelmingly, none of that. No. None of that. I there will is, actually say to our business alone, I can, I can say one person got a good reference for me. And it's not about getting a good or bad reference. I feel like I'm very honest. It was yeah. only one person that actually gave notice and finished well. Yeah. And a lot of the things that this person did... I completely disagreed with sure. the thought processes yeah, that this sure. person had everything. I could not have disagreed more. However, we had open and honest conversations. We agreed to disagree in a lot of things. And I said to this person, I said, thank you for your notice. If you finish strong, put me as number one on your reference yeah. and I will make sure you get a good reference. Because agree or disagree on things doesn't really matter. Did you execute what we needed done? Yep. Did you do the job well? You know, you gave us your best. Did you show up on time? Right. Did you do the job? Like you just said, well, did you commit to your schedule and not call out last minute or not show yeah. up half the time? I mean. And let's be your Raven fans. We've, we've had a lot of trainers come and go over the years. Most of them have come and gone. I, I, I was going to say it because of my decision, but really it was their decisions that, that led to that. Right. And then I made the ultimate decision, but we've had. One over the years, eight years, one who left, started their own business. I cheered him out the door. Not like, get the hell out of here, rah, rah, rah. But, hey, man, I hope you kill it. I reach out to every couple months. 
See how he's doing. You doing well? Anything I can help you with? What's going on? Small business ownership is not easy. Like, no, can like I offer some support. Like, right, and and we had some very honest conversations when he was leading up to that decision. Said, "Hey, man, look, you got a family." Because it was kind of a couple months in the making, and you really. It, it was for sure. I mean, because he reached some... out and said, "This is where I'm at. This is how I'm feeling. I, I think it's time that I, I go out on my own. This is what I'm wanting to achieve." Having been down that path. I wanted to have some very, because I really appreciated the work. He and I did not get along great. Personally, I don't know that you could have found two people who were different. Um, But I appreciated the work he did for us. Mm -hmm. He, the clients loved him. him. The dogs were always cared for. He did a wonderful, he was a wonderful trainer. And I said, you know what? Hey man, can we just have a conversation? I said, I hear what you're saying you want to, to accomplish by making this change. But I need to be honest with you. As a dad with young kids when I started and a husband, the things you're saying you want are not really realistic. They don't come with this package of trying to open a business because because now you're not just training, you're marketing, you're selling, you're troubleshooting, you're customer service. You are all the pieces. That does not necessarily equate to more time, to flexibility, more time with your kids. And so I felt an obligation to him because he felt an obligation to me to say, hey, this is where my mind's at. I asked him what the time frame was. He says, you tell me. I know I'm booked out. I'll honor my schedule. <laughs> Bam. This is cool. And we had two conversations. Where I didn't try to sell him on staying. But we had conversations about very real things that he was going to experience going out on his own. And I wanted to be very clear that, hey, you have a home with us. If this doesn't work out, and he still does. If he called me today and he said, Hey man, this was not what it was, you know, what, is what, not I, what I what I wanted, thought. what I was looking for. Um, you got a spot for me? One hundred percent I'd have a spot for him. One person over eight years. It's so crazy to me. It's it's mind blowing to me. And I started thinking about when I when I decided a couple of days ago, maybe yesterday, I think it was yesterday when I decided. I wanted us to to redo the episode that I did months ago. Um, I started thinking about my jobs. And over my career, what job could I not get back? Or what job would I be hesitant to ask for back? I don't have one. Every single one of them, I'm confident I could get back. Maybe I'm an idiot. But the fact that I have relationships with literally every single one of those people still to this day, the fact that every one of those people to this day that I worked for or with, they were management level, stuff like that, listen to this show or wish my kids happy birthday, you know, on social media. They're still connected to me. Do I talk to them every day? No, absolutely not. But the beauty of social media is you can stay connected. To you can them stay connected in a positive way. And to kind of bring in what you were saying earlier about like, you feel like people your age don't do well with the jobs because it's not necessarily something that they're passionate about. A huge thing that they miss out on is you're right. It might not be like your calling. It might not be your passion, but is it a stepping stone for you to figure out your calling and figure out your passion or even, maybe not even figure out, but like, you know, eventually it'll mean something when you get to what that is. And if you don't have those stepping stones to get there, you're screwing up your passion, your yeah. calling, what that's going to be down the road. Because if you can't, if you don't build your resume as you're a working adult, your relationships, your learning on the job stuff and obviously degrees, you know, whatever, mm-hmm. you're killing it for yourself. Like, and not yeah. the good kind of killing it, the bad kind of killing yeah. it. I mean, that's, like, a, that's a really good point because I feel like, so many people want to make money off of what they're passionate about, but they don't want to make money to fund their passion. And it's kind of a. Oof, well, that, 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 hey, cheers, cheers to that. that. Take a sip. <laughs> that was good. Thank you. What's up, guys? Jonathan here. And I just wanted to let you all know that this episode ended up going for roughly two hours long. So we ended up cutting it into two separate parts. And we hope that you'll tune in next week to listen here on the Big Dog Podcast. Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer had a very shiny nose.
And if you ever saw it, you would even say it glows. 